Ink and Echo, the show where there's always... Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm already screwing it up. Where there's always a LaCroix open in the vicinity of my microphone. And on Andy's side, probably a beer in the vicinity. There it is. There it is. <laughs> it's very jangly open. Uh, it's my keys, key bottle opener. Yeah. Yep, this, that's uh, true. This episode is a humdinger. I tell you what, you mm-hmm. haven't heard it yet, Andy, but... um. No, it's, because stupid tech difficulties are the bane of my existence right now. But I'm bane. glad. I'm glad you did it, and I wish I could have been on it. So yeah, it's, it's your sister funny. who shares right. my it name, my but sister. not my spelling of the name. Correct. Ah, <laughs> uh, this this one is funny because we kind of went in reverse order. It's like it dives super deep and sad right away (laughs) and then by but then by the end we're talking about books and mark maron and podcasts and stuff so um but man i i'm really excited about this episode i think it will be particularly i mean i hope helpful to our guests because uh i mean andy she lays it all andy my sister lays it all on the table just what she's been going through with depression and she's the mom of three boys and um it's it's heavy but it's i think really helpful and encouraging in a in a weird way too just to hear her walk through this stuff and process it so heavy but helpful is a good tagline if there it is (laughs) if there's something we were trying to go for on the show maybe with a little bit of stupidity mixed in every once in a while right um hey this is awesome this is coming out on memorial day oh yeah so everyone will be listening hmm. with their families around the the barbecue pit is what you're saying that's yeah gonna be everyone's priorities to still listen can is very family friendly <laughs> language specifically it's very yeah clean okay and, yeah. so can i can i do some self promo here for a little bit will promo you allow it. that promo it up. it up the promo <laughs> So, all right, Ink and Echo listeners, I'm going on many tours this summer, and I want to tell you about them. So, the first one is I'm doing a living room tour as Lowercase Noises with my friends in Hotel Neon, which two-thirds of them have been on this show, Stephen Kemner and Andrew Tasselmeyer. And we are doing a living room tour uh, June 26th through July 11th, and it's generally in the Midwest, and tickets are on sale now. So they're, they're literally shows in people's houses. And we set up a kick-ass sound system and some really cool visual stuff. And it's really cool. So And just to perk people's ears a bit, mm-hmm. I, you should name the cities that you're going to. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's see if I can do it right. So it starts off in Denver, Colorado, which, spoiler alert, it's at Josh's house. Yep. So uh, It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. So you can do a little meet and greet with the Ink and Echo boys. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh, boy. All right. So Denver, Colorado, Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, Kansas City, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri. And then we're doing Audio Feed Festival, which is Champaign, Illinois. And then Cincinnati, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, We're playing around with an Atlanta show right after that, but that's not confirmed yet. So I won't say that it's confirmed. Nice. Um, and then Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, uh, oh wait, nope, Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, obviously. So that's, Boom. that's it. And you can go to lowercasenoises.com slash tour to find those tour dates. And listen, listen up, kiddos. Uh, I, <laughs> I did a little <laughs> promo code just for Ink and Echo listeners. So you can use the code Ink and Echo, all one word. Uh, when you buy one of those tickets and you will get 10% off. So there. Dang. Um, yeah. Hey, Good how do you, deal. how do you, how do you feel about the price of these tickets, Josh? Is it offensive to you or no? No way. Tw- what no. is it? 20 or 25? 20. Yeah. Yeah. 20. That's no, that's totally reasonable. I think. Okay. Um, I was a little, every... yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I'm a little, I was a little nervous about that cost and I also did it such that I, there's a little bit of fees, but I eat that. So I'm getting slightly less than $20 per ticket. Mm. Um, Cause I didn't want people to say, oh, that's expensive. And then have another few dollars tacked on at the end. So right. I, yeah, but I was pretty nervous about it. But since tickets have been on sale for a few days at this point, um, it's honestly 
kind of blown me away how many people we've already surpassed the amount of ticket sales that we did for the entire tour the last year <laughs> yeah which is yeah. amazing and and cool so right no i think that's totally reasonable because i mean they're getting to see two bands i think people are willing to pay a little more for those intimate yeah. in-person shows as opposed to a venue right um, well, and, yeah. and plus it's like when it's done i just people just hang out we talk it's much more comfortable right. in terms of being with other human beings <laughs> there's there's not so much of the whole like hey i'm up on a stage like above you and i'm hiding from you afterwards it's just right. we're all just kind of here together and i happen to be playing a guitar <laughs> and you're sitting there but for the most part we're all on the same level and i like that about it very much so yeah yeah totally it should be i'm um, looking forward to that a lot yeah so and yeah. aside from that i'm also supporting emory on three different tours this summer which is insane if i if i could go back and talk to my 20 year old college self who was listening to the week's end and the question in college right um and said hey you're going to be making this weird ambient instrumental music but you're going to be going on tour with emory and opening for them like what it's so silly sounding it's ridiculous but here we are so yeah that's gonna be really cool too yeah just just uh before getting on this podcast, I was, I did a practice tear down of all my gear and packed it up and um, I'm weighing it on a scale so I can make sure my two checked bags mm. are under 50 pounds. So, oh gosh, uh, yeah. So I've got my pedal board down to 43 pounds and then the bag with other junk in it is at like 30 right now. So I have like a little less than 20 pounds worth of clothes I can bring, which should be totally fine. Right. But, so I've never do, flown. Do you have a hard case yeah. for your guitar? Yeah, and I'll have that to carry it on overhead. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, e- either gate check it or, or carry it on. I've not. I've only done that a few times. Flown with a, flown with my guitar, but uh, yeah, right. it should be fine. So I have my backpack, and my guitars, carry on, and then pedal board and uh, projector, mixer, and other pedal board in my other checked bag. So, ugh. Oh, goodness, but that yeah. kind of makes me. I'm glad I'm not the one flying with all that stuff. It just makes me anxious. I, it, I hate, I like to travel as light as possible. I hate having to bring even a laptop with me because they make you tear oh, totally. it out. And, exactly. Anyway. And I'm I'm going to, not that this makes up for much, but I think I'm probably going to bring like one pair of pants and like two shirts <laughs> and that's yeah. it. Like I don't want to have to worry about more crap. Um, oh, and that makes me think of, so when I was talking to Matt Carter about the tour, he's like, yeah, you could just like fly in the day of the show. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to do that. Like if, if one of my checked bags gets like fucked up and goes somewhere oh, and he's, yeah, yeah. I was like, I do not want to leave room for things to get real screwy, you know, because yep. that would just be for terrible. sure. So I'll be flying in a day early each time and that's fine with me. So, yeah. So right. those dates are up at lowercasenoises.com slash tour as well. If you want to see those and those are only 10 bucks. So you can choose, you can pay $20 and see me play a longer set in a, more intimate space or you can pay ten dollars and see me play music in front of a lot of people who will probably be very confused about what's going on (laughs) right yeah so all right what were you gonna say i was gonna say i'd go for the go for the home the home show i mean if you're yeah just go to both screw it well that's the (laughs) definite option that you should do right what kind of what kind of merch are you going to be bringing with you at least on the house show tour Oh, the house show tour, I'll have I'll have a couple different vinyl. I'll have the vinyl for the new album. It'll be in. Oh, that's the thing, too. Uh, the vinyl got really delayed, so the it's actually not even ready yet for the new album. So it should be ready at the latest by June 16th to ship out to people. Yeah. And so I'll have it barely in time for the tour. So I'll have that. I'll have two oh, different yeah. T-shirts. I'll actually have CDs of the new album, which is crazy. I've never had. I mean, right. I haven't had that in a long time. Yeah. Um, that'll probably be it. Just t-shirts, CDs, vinyl, I think. Nice. Okay. So, I hope that's, people have come to expect that vinyl just, when they're pre-ordering, it it almost always <laughs> is going to be later than the date, the release date. I mean, I've waited really long amounts of time for things before. Yeah. When we did all so, we could to try to get it to be ready by sure. release day. But yeah. I guess there was a, I don't know all the details, but I guess there was a literal 
like malfunction water leak something at the manufacturing plant so it's like it didn't mess up the vinyl but it just made it so they couldn't start um so yeah that's what you get with you know this sort of old (laughs) i don't know if you could call it old technology but that's uh that's just what happens i guess so right yeah all right is there anything else you want to do before we get to the interview any anything else in joshy's life hmm (laughs) no i don't think so I saw you uh, cord- post a little checklist for Cordial Kill that had most everything checked off, so that was cool. Oh, yeah. It's in the hands of the sound mixer now, so... Oh, really? Finally. Nice. Yeah. Um, and I... <laughs> last night, after recording uh, this w- talk with Andy Kirk, uh, I showed my sister and Emmy the full film for the... Oh, cool. You know, neither of them had seen it. And I don't know if I'm going to regret that. I might whatever it doesn't matter because there won't be Uh, like a reveal for the final final thing yeah and just they won't get they won't see it for the first time on a big screen i mean i I don't know but their response was encouraging and uh my sister laughed at all the jokes like genuinely (laughs) so that made me feel good um yes because i was a little worried that they were falling flat or my humor doesn't come across but every (laughs) everybody so far has just been like this is such your personality this movie yeah it totally (laughs) is which i guess i guess that's good uh yeah quirky and silly and strange right so yeah so anyway that's all i am so i mean it's like i'm just so excited to have it done i'll be so glad when i've just got a little digital rendered out yeah done on my desktop and then i can finally give it to people and yes um that'll be one chapter closed Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Are you taking any sort of like a break? I feel like if I was in that situation, I'd be like, all right, it's out of my hands. I'm going to like well, cease some of this work for like a week or so. I don't know if that's how you work or not. No. I mean, okay, here's something interesting. This uh, this is in answer to that question. I was the other day at work listening, of all things, to interviews on YouTube with David Lynch, who mm. I don't even really care for his movies but I, he is a fascinating guy to listen to what about just, twin peaks isn't he the twin peaks guy yeah yeah that are just, you into that new, show no okay. i tried the original uh i ver- did you know, as well and, and i couldn't, couldn't get into it yeah <laughs> he, he his work is very curious and very uh it's certain taste yeah so anyway right. but he's he's a really articulate fascinating guy and something that he said on there um because the the interviewer was asking him if he's going to you know do more TV or do a movie next or what, and he's just like, well, whatever I fall in love with was basically his answer. Because hmm. he's done, I mean, he's a visual artist. He's done music albums. He does all yeah. kinds of shit. Um, so he was basically just like, well, I don't know, but whatever carries my passion next, I'm going to yeah. do that. And that just. Uh, I don't that's, know. That made me feel really nice and yeah. relax a little bit. That it's like, yes, I I'm gonna do that too, or I'm gonna try to right, just because we talked uh, previously about people who are in that film world and are so so in it that right. that's all they're gonna do, and you're kind of wondering like, well, I'm not, y- yeah. Well, so we that makes a lot of sense with your desires because they're kind of all over the place. I think that's good. I think that's really good. Sure. Yeah. I want to try to be more aware of that and lean into it and not put pressure on myself to feel the need to do the same thing again, uh, immediately, yeah. like another mm-hmm. movie again. So I, I learned from putting out the shot in October, 2015, that it is not good for me to take breaks oh, um, interesting. because then that turned into like a, a six month. Break. Yeah. Which we kind of <laughs> okay. talked about early on this show. Uh, yeah in super early episodes but so anyway but i mean that to sort of tease something i'm uh compiling well there's a new there will be a new short story coming out in the next couple weeks um that you've actually you've read this one and i'm just deciding to to put it out so i'll I'll surely talk about it when that happens but it was just kind of one of those where i this story's done i really like it and it's just like I, I'm to a point now where I can kind of design my own book covers, um, and so it's hey, like, yeah, why not? I, I just had a thought. Have you thought about recording an audio version of that book and either or that story and putting it on here or either like for Patreon people or something? That'd be pretty cool. 
I yes, for sure. I I don't know where exactly to put it out. I do I do want to do an audio version for sure. I'd like to do that with That'd all the awesome. stories, frankly. Um, but this one is short enough. I could knock it out in a couple hours, I think. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that'd be out of place to like do the entire story here yeah, or, uh, you know, as kind of a bonus standalone episode or right, I've even I thought I maybe I should just make a separate podcast that is only my fiction and it just comes cool. out sp- sporadically. I don't know. That it's almost... Like a, I almost like that the best. Just have it be your own little channel kind of thing where you can do whatever you want. I think that'd be really cool. Sure. Yeah, kind of like Matthew Jordan does. I mean, he yes. released a novel in the form of a podcast, basically. So, yeah. And it exists in print, too. But um, So, yeah. I nice. I hope that I will make the time to do an audio version because I've been meaning to since the very first story that I wrote. I've wanted to do that. So, right. Um, You've got an even better yeah. mic to do it on now because That's of our Patreon very true. people. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sure I'll talk about that right. shortly. It's it's with uh, it is also in the hands of other people being formatted for Kindle. Uh, ah. So then, as soon as that's done, I'll just throw it up on Amazon and uh, so, yeah, more on that later. But yeah, let's uh, let's get to my talk with my sister, Andy Kirk. All right, here we go. Okay, folks. Well. Andy Othling is not on this one yet again because he lives in the middle of nowhere and his power doesn't work and his internet doesn't work and actually he feels really bad about it but I would like to make him feel more shitty for not being on this show for living there where he does. He should live somewhere better in suburbia where power works but I'm here in my m- marriage bedroom with my <laughs> sister. <laughs> <laughs> with my sister Andy Kirk, um, who used to have my last name and now has her own last name, thanks to a guy named Brandon. Um, but so, and it, it's funny to talk to you in this setting, right? Like yeah. it's a little awkward and it's a little funny and weird, but I really wanted to have you on because, well, for a lot of reasons, but just how was today? Like, how's today been? You were talking earlier about how this week has been rough, but. Yeah. Um, Today has been, it's been pretty good. Um, I saw my therapist today and uh, it was, it's been rough to talk to her because um, I think my whole, my whole goal in life is to, uh, is to dissolve into the background and to not be seen. Mm. And, um, So going to talk to a therapist for an hour or two just about myself is not great. Yeah. Um, How long have you been seeing her? I didn't even know that. Yeah. um, I've been seeing her for, I think, three weeks now. Um, And it's been something that I've been trying to set up for a long time. But because of anxiety and depression, it it was so debilitating that I felt like I couldn't even look through this list of all these people that are insurance covered. Um, yeah. And uh, so finally I asked Brandon, my husband to just call somebody for me. And mm-hmm. uh, he tried several people and we found out the cost, which was just like insane. Right. And so <clears throat> we finally just said, okay, we have to make this work. And, um, I mean, I kept, it was, it finally got to the point where I said, okay, I'll give up my iPhone. I'll give up, like, I will sell hmm. our TV. I'll sell my laptop so that I can go see somebody. Cause I have to, I have to talk to somebody. Right. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really good to see her. Um, but like I said, it's been super weird right. and. You fit well fading into the background, that being the goal of your life. I feel like I would never have known that about you. That doesn't really? uh, that doesn't line up with what I think I know of you. Yeah, I mean, because you're pretty, at least with our family and with your close friends, pretty jokey and jovial and like yeah. heavily sarcastic and and stuff. And you seem in those moments very well balanced and comfortable. And but what is that? 
wanting to pull back yeah. to not be seen? Yeah. Um, I think it just, be, it just comes from, um, just a total lack of self-confidence and, uh, and I think I can make up for it pretty easily with being jokey and, and over the top. Sure. Um, and, uh, but it's always something that makes me really uncomfortable. Hmm. Um, like, I feel like I have told, I have been told by so many people, oh, you missed your calling. You should have been a comedian or, or something. <laughs> um, and, uh, I just, yeah, I love to make people laugh, but I also feel really uncomfortable when I make them laugh because then everyone's attention is on me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I just feel comfortable with our family. Um, but I think it's also a tactic of sure just of hiding what is actually going on because I don't feel comfortable sharing what's really happening. Yeah. Have you done the Enneagram, by the way? I have. Okay. I've done it twice. And uh, I think the first time I was a five, wing mm. six, I think. Okay. And then uh, I just took it again a couple weeks ago and I was a four. Yeah. Yeah, because you've always had, for sure, creative tendencies, which I always associate with fours, but I've I mean, I've realized that's not necessarily always the case, but I could, I could see both. I, I could see you as a five too. the very cerebral, lots of heavy thinking yeah. or, and even overthinking certain things in life and stuff. Um, how is this all? I mean, it's funny cause we're jumping in fairly heavy, fairly quick, which is fine with me. That's what this show is. We don't have Andy Othling on to make <laughs> stupid puns and dad jokes and <laughs> lighten it up a little bit, but uh, I mean, how, how has this played into just being a mom and there's sort of the reality that you have these three little boys and you can't just run away from them. So you, you have to exist and, and at least keep them surviving. So while all this is going on in your head, what does that yeah. looked like and yeah. what drove you to seek help? You know? Yeah. Um, I think it started when, after my third son was born, and uh, I, it was just completely debilitating, and I, um, I would get these, I would get panic attacks, and um, just a complete sense of just being totally overwhelmed. Like, um, there were so many times where I felt like, okay, right now to survive, I have to just make sure that the older boys are safe and fine and I'm going to set this baby down and I'm going to walk out the front door and just never look back. Hmm. Um, And uh, started to realize, okay, that's not normal and this isn't just baby blues or um, some small thing. Hmm. Um, Like I'm not just feeling sad. I'm feeling like I can't even get out of bed um so it has it's changed a lot of things um in the day-to-day it sometimes it looks like putting the kids in front of the tv and just handing them cheerios or or sometimes even that is a an accomplishment to hand them cheerios (laughs) usually it's asking the five-year-old to get a snack for the other two right um but, um, yeah, I think I just kept trying to muscle my way through and uh, just saying, okay, I need to just think positively or I need to, like, nothing is really wrong mm-hmm. in my life. My life is fine and my life is good. I have uh, I have this beautiful family. I have a husband and we have a good marriage. And um, there was nothing that I could point to that was saying, oh, this is why I'm feeling so sad or so down or having these panic attacks or, um, or anything like that. And so, um, 
I kept telling my husband I need to talk to someone. And I think that was all I could say was that I was overwhelmed and that I needed to talk to someone, but I couldn't communicate the depth of the, the problem. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so when I finally saw the therapist, um, she had me do some evaluations and, um, at the time I was, I was, um, really suicidal hmm. and and what does that mean someone else evaluating you or you do like a test or a questionnaire yeah you do a questionnaire um i did one for depression and one for anxiety and um scored really high for both of them which is you want a low score right um scored in the severe depression and severe anxiety and um and so what she had suggested was that I go to a treatment center, um, which, which is like a monitored scenario. Right. Okay. Right. So you're basically in lockdown. They take your phone, they take your shoestrings, they take everything. Which sounds super depressing. Like that yeah. doesn't sound like a place to get better. Yeah. You know. Right. So, um, yeah, that was, that was totally shocking and not what I was expecting at all. Um, and, uh, and so she had suggested that, um, that I go to one of these 30 day, um, things and kind of had set me up to go on this, uh, trajectory, um, towards getting some intense inpatient care. And, um, and then she wanted me to see my primary doctor and, and, uh, go see a psychiatrist first. Um, so I did that. I went and saw the psychiatrist and was evaluated by him. And um, and did all this, sorry to interrupt, did it feel over the top to you? Like, did it feel like, oh, this can't be me? Or did it feel about right? Like, um, yes, I do need this intensive of... It did and it didn't. Okay. Um, yeah. At first it felt like, uh, yeah, this might be what I need because because it doesn't feel like just talking to someone about my problems is going to fix it. Yeah. Um, because it felt so out of my control. Um, and, but it did also feel like, man, am I just like a crazy person? Like hmm. walking into the psychiatrist's office was just trippy and weird. And I was expecting like the typical TV yeah. scenario where right, you right. like lay on the leather couch <laughs> and he just yeah. like nods his head at you. Yeah. Um, and, and so it was kind of weird, like, walking into his office and there's, like, this basket of, like, fidget spinners and, like, mm. rubber ducks and all this, like, stuff that you can touch and play with. Um, and it felt super weird, but then he was really laid back and, um, and said, no, I absolutely don't want you to go to an inpatient place. Mm. Um, he said to, to take you away from your family, I think that would do... Um, more harm than good, and which was what I was really worried about, just thinking, okay, I'm going to be away from my baby for a month, which in in um, in the infant stage, that's a, you right. miss a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was kind of really freaking out about that. Right. Um, so now it's kind of more a balanced, uh, balanced out thing where my psychiatrist and my therapists are talking to each other and and we have a treatment plan that we're going to do and it's kind of some um, more intensive um, outpatient therapy and um, and I'm also on some medication some antidepressants to um, kind of chemically figure things out and then my therapist is helping me work through the the um, kind of the thought processes and right and stuff like that yeah and this i mean i you kind of well okay a couple of things i do want to like make sure that our listeners don't come into this conversation just assuming that you're defined by your depression yeah. or anxiety at all because i don't view you that way and, and no one should um you know you're a grown woman you're a, a wife and a, and a mother and an artist in my eyes. Um, and uh, yeah, I just don't, it's, 
even though it's so prevalent and I love that we're able to talk about it to this depth, like, uh, you know, I don't want that to just be your sort of marker of like Andy, the depressed person. Yeah. Um, Cause if that was true, then that should also be my marker. But you kind of alluded to the fact that it, it seemed to all culminate uh, when your third boy was born. Mm. I could say his name. I'm not sure if you <laughs> don't. Just <laughs> fine. <laughs> Obviously I know your kids' names. Um, when Trevor was born. Did you, was there any of it prior to that or even growing up uh, before you got married or before you guys had kids? Was there any of this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, after, after Trevor was born, it was, it was um, just super intense and um, I was really, really suicidal hmm. um, to the point where I was using suicide hotlines and um, talking to people through text messages like yeah. I feel like I'm going to kill myself right now what do I do um, and I never ever thought that I would do those things yeah. um, and so I think I think um, postpartum depression was my original um, diagnosis but yeah. then researching and learning more about depression i think i've realized i've had it since mm. ever since i can remember sure um and it largely has come out in just anger and um aggression more than just oh i'm sad i feel i feel really sad right um and it's been there's been um elements of that too yeah um but yeah, I've I've realized I think it's something that's always been there. Yeah. How does uh, how does Brandon do with all this? Because he's obviously uh, listeners don't know, but I mean Brandon's pretty upbeat. Mm -hmm. He's pretty positive, and like there's not in as far as I know him, there's not a lot that gets him down. Yeah. You know he can he can get sad, but he's pretty positive and he's very encouraging to you it seems like mm -hmm. um so how has he been and does he understand what you're what's happening yeah yeah it's been it's been difficult um partially because it's difficult for me to communicate hmm. um the severity of the situation a lot of the time and um i think it's been hard for him just feeling pretty helpless and not knowing how to help me. Yeah. Um, and he has been great and, and has um, just been such a help to take care of the kids and give me time and space when I need it. Yeah. Um, but I think he also just um, doesn't understand a lot of it, not for lack of wanting to, but just, just not knowing how to help or what. Right. what to do he's really never been in that mental space probably yeah at least yeah has he, uh do you know what he is on the enneagram By i chance, can't remember i think it? it's okay. like a two okay i don't remember i could see that sure yeah two two is a very much a helper yeah um yeah i'd peg him as like a two or a six <laughs> This is nice that we're talking about him while he's not on the microphone. But <laughs> anyway, yeah, very helping servant personality. Um, do you, what is, what does a good day look like for you where you feel like yourself and you feel positive or happy or content, you know, and, and how often do those happen? Yeah. Uh, it just depends. Um, Sleep is a huge, huge part of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, with with the baby, he some nights he wakes up one time, and some nights he wakes up eight times. Sure. Um, and so it's just like I never know what kind of night I'm gonna have. Right. Um, but a good day, um, I feel like I can do anything and I will get up and I will clean the house and the boys are dressed by 7 a.m. and I've taken a shower and um and we're out hiking or on a walk or yeah um or they have actual we have actual meals that we eat instead of like 
I can't even listen to another question. We have to just like get in the car and get Chick-fil-A right. for the seventh time this week. Um, sure. So, yeah, right now a good successful day is just doing basic things right now like taking care of the laundry or um or being able to work on some art or do some writing yeah and i mean gosh i feel <laughs> i'm having like a a double moment here just feeling horrible as your brother for not knowing that this was kind of this intense and even i mean not to diminish what you're saying but uh i resonate and have experienced a lot of what you're saying um and you know whatever maybe i'm not the best person to be sharing it with or to seek out help from obviously but um the the other thing what you just said made me think of is like on um I mean, on social media, you seem so like you're always making cool projects for the boys to do and crafts and getting out and doing interesting things. And not that that's inauthentic or uh, disingenuous, um, but someone on the outside might perceive that, oh, Andy's fine. Like she's a good mom and she's creative and interesting. And um, not that you're not those things, but it's just that's one of those tricky elements of social media um do you do you have friends or any other moms just locally in colorado springs that who are at least aware of this or who you can talk openly to yeah um there is one friend that i um have talked to it's um it's actually one of brandon's coworkers. it's his wife and she has been so great. And she will text me multiple times a day. She'll hound me until I answer. And um, nice. just she has dealt with a lot of depression as well. Um, and and so she will she will really um, check in on me a lot. Yeah. And that has been helpful, but it's also. Um, when I do share a lot of things, like I, I had called her when my therapist had suggested that I go to a treatment center mm -hmm. and I just kind of told her where I was at in that moment. And this was when I still thought that I was going to go, um, sure. and just kind of totally melted down, which is not something that I do with, with friends. Um, mm. and, uh, and quickly after that, I just felt so, so much embarrassment and so much um, shame. And just like, I, I literally thought, okay, well, I'm never talking to her again. Like, I'm going to mm -hmm. delete her number. I'm going to block her number. Like, I never want to talk to this chick again. Yeah. Because I just totally let her see all of this. Right. Um, but the, the thing about social media also is... Um, I things like that um, when I make an art project with the boys or um, or I'm able to to do something like that it's um, it takes an incredible amount of um, pushing myself to get to that point yeah. and um, and I it's funny that you say that because I often will, write this whole long thing about just like all of the shit that happened before that. Right. Um, and then I think, ah, oh, no, I don't want to be that person who's like, please notice me. I, I had a really hard day, but I still made something beautiful or I don't know. Um, just not wanting to be that person who writes this whole novel on Instagram. Sure. Um, but then also I I started a blog when I started taking medication. Yeah. Um just about this whole kind of postpartum journey and that was when I thought it was just kind of strictly postpartum. Um and then wa wanting to still kind of expand it into into a full full life spectrum blog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um but finding the time with three small kids has been a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, 
and I, and I started the blog because I wanted to I wanted to write a blog during the process. Right. Um because nobody else that I could find has done that. Um the process of starting medication and starting therapy and going through all these assessments and just living daily life um and like I said I couldn't find that. Um and then I quickly realized oh the oh I realize why nobody does that because mm. it's horrible. Mm. Um, and there is so much fear that goes with that. Like I was really suicidal two weeks ago and I want to write about that, but then thinking, okay, well, is somebody going to like call child protective services and be like, Oh, mm. this mom is super suicidal and um, she needs to have her kids taken away or just, just right. these irrational fears. Um or um, just fear of judgment, like, man, what a selfish mom or a wife that she um, is thinking these things. So, so I'm still working through, working through that. Yeah. Um, and I still really want to do that to to provide um, just some honesty into the conversation. Right. Um, right you, in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. And you had some pretty immediate feedback right yeah from people that yeah. was that was unexpected for you yeah yeah a lot um i had a lot of people writing me and and just being completely vulnerable and open with their own stories yeah um which was not something that had even crossed my mind might happen right and these were people you didn't know for the most part right yeah was there I'm sorry if you're going to say more about no, that. No. Um, what what clicks in for you, if anything, when other women are coming to you? Like, are you able to? Because I've found, in some small degree, in a, in a different way. Uh, I don't know. Basically, when someone else is hurting, I completely forget about myself. Finally, because I spend all my time thinking about mm -hmm. myself. But when someone else is hurting, like with an email like that. I zone in and want to encourage them and just be like, Hey, here is what has worked for me and, and so forth. Um, is there any of that that comes in or, or does it feel scary or, or weird to try to encourage other women? Yeah. Um, I think it mostly just felt super scary. Hmm. Um, like, Oh shit! Like you need to talk to a professional or something. Sure. Um, and I, and that largely came at a time where nothing was working for me. Um, but I think I think a huge amount of um, support was provided on both sides when we were able to just say, "Yeah, I've I've felt that way too." Right. Um, and I think that provides just so much comfort. Um, and ease to know, okay, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Right. And I think particularly women um, feel that way, and especially moms, um, because so few people are honest about, yeah. about things and about the way they feel, because you're a mom, you're supposed to be totally in love with being a mom and sure. and feel great about having kids and um and i just wasn't feeling that at all and still don't a lot of the time right yeah it's it's such an, a weird ambiguous thing that builds over time it seems like that assumption um that we need to be whatever we think we need to be as far as parents or or spouses or people um, and I don't know if it's especially prevalent today because of social media and we, we just pick up on these little things that we see people being better than us, quote unquote. Um, but I just think it's so much, it's just a bunch of shit. And, and, uh, there's so much fear kind of, as you alluded to about, about being honest about struggle that when you're in person with with someone else with a, a friend or an acquaintance um that you can't 
at least it's it's presumed upon us because of our culture that we can't just be like yeah today fucking sucks i'm tired of being a parent i don't like my marriage right now or or whatever it is um anyway i'm just going on a rant because i think about these things a lot but i i do think and i hope that we're moving closer to something where it's not just everybody uh bitching at each other all the time about our lives sucking but just breaking down some of those barriers in conversation that we don't have to look put together and um that we are living real lives and going through hard things um how you feeling on that beer you can open it yet <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i was thinking about it but i didn't want you should no it crack like, it open okay. andy will right. burp in the mic right. and andy i'll think that is oh. um crack it <laughs> andy and i were both a little nervous stepping into this and she's had a beer sitting there just, just waiting to warm. be opened um do you have hope i guess for the future or can you imagine a version of yourself where you're really thriving and you're who you want to be at least in your own assessment and it's uh, okay if the answer is no no yeah it's definitely no okay um and uh right now i'm reading two self-help books which is just like the worst thing <laughs> ever um it just feels like so just like this disgusting bullshit that I just don't want to have anything to do with. Um, but I have come to this point where nothing else that I have tried has worked. So I'm going to just do what my therapist is telling me to do for a little while. Yeah. Um, anyway, I say that because in, in both of them, um, that is a large part of it is, Okay, can you see a future self where you yeah. are um, doing well and thriving? And honestly, right now, I I um, I think I can't even imagine uh, just being stable for um, an extended period of time. And the, and it changes because some when I have a really good day, I think, oh man, I will never feel down again. Right. Um, or next time I'm down, I'm going to remember how it felt yeah. to be so high. And yeah, then, yeah. and then five minutes later or the next day or whatever, it, I am just so low again. Um, but generally the outlook is, is pretty, pretty bleak. Yeah. Do you think that's always been? Um, yeah, I think so. I think um, I have always, I can't remember a time where I felt really hopeful or optimistic about things. Hmm. Um, I think I have always kind of viewed myself as essentially a piece of shit, and most hmm. people view me that way too, um, or I assume that they do. And sure. won't believe otherwise, even if they tell me. Um, but yeah, I I have thought that way for a long time. Yeah. I can relate to that. Um, but I, I would hope, and I, and I think this will happen, but just even, even with a little bit more age, I mean, it, it could look like even in a year or two from now, I don't know, something about just getting older uh, helps in one, giving less of a shit about what people think of you, but also just leaning into your own comforts, you know, and I'm not spe like, I'm only three years older than you, two and a half, not as if I'm some sage, because I struggle with this hugely as well. Um, but I don't know, just just recognizing how much me me, I've realized me dwelling on what other people think of me is actually just me thinking about myself and that's not me condemning you or, or something or calling you shitty. But, um, I don't know. I do. I do think there's just a confidence that comes with age. We, we come into our own selves in a way that I think is just natural and part of being human. And, and we're only at this stage of it 
So it, it does feel clunky and weird and like we're not fully who we want to be yet. Um, Cause I, to get, well, I feel like you have grown so much in confidence even since becoming a mother, you know, like something has clicked in to you just as a, as a woman that you are um, sure of yourself. And maybe you don't feel that way inwardly. Um, but there's just something that happens when you have kids that zones you in a little bit, both to your family and to yourself uh, that I think is really beautiful. And I think that will only grow from here, both for you and just in general. Um, but I'm, I am curious back to just sort of seeing yourself as a piece of shit, as you say, um, why do you think that is? I mean, and you can get, can you point back to any specific source as to why, and you don't have to be specific if you don't want, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know right now. Um, I think I just, yeah, I just can't remember a time not feeling that way and not feeling like nobody wanted me around. Um, or, um, yeah, I think I just never developed any confidence in myself and i think i think part of that was that i was just such a shy kid hmm. um and uh and never really grew out of that or was forced forced out of that to kind of be pushed beyond that yeah um and so yeah i d i don't really know where that has come from and, uh, but I can see there are places where I do have more confidence, yeah. um, in who I am and just, just not caring what people think of me. Sure. Um, cause you've always, sorry to interrupt. No. You, even now you have, there are moments when you have a little bit of like a fuck you attitude. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like totally. going against the, the current or whatever yeah. it would be. Um, and so it, it does like come out of you at, yeah. at times when you're really passionate about something. Yeah. 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 I would say in general, I, I have that attitude, but I think once, once you get deeper or once I interact with people, um, for longer periods of time, I kind of start to shrink back because I'm not mm. comfortable with who I am. And I think that comes from not knowing who I am, um, yeah. Which, and I think that comes from, um, I got married at a super young age and had kids at a really young age. Sure. And um, I just never was able to kind of find out who I was or make mistakes or, um, I don't know, just, yeah, just figure out who I am as a person. Yeah. And so I think I'm kind of figuring that out now right? and realizing, oh, it's okay to be kind of weird and yeah. like, it's fine. Right. Um, and I think, I think being married has helped that. And I think Brandon has been a safe place to kind of just figure out who I am. Um, it's also created some complications in our marriage just um i don't know i jokingly tell him all the time i don't need you um <laughs> but just like just kind of which probably breaks his heart oh yeah but. it probably does <laughs> um well not probably i know it does uh but yeah just i think I think I, f I always feel like I need to be quiet. I need to suppress my, um, my asserting myself or my, which I don't know. A lot of the time I will, I will talk when we are in groups or hanging out with a bunch of people. And then later on I'll tell Brandon, Oh my gosh, I, I talked so much. I was like, hmm. 
I was, I dominated the conversation and he's like, did you say anything? I don't think you said anything during that conversation. Um, so I think me asserting myself or what it feels like asserting myself is actually me just like almost talking the same amount as normal people do. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should lean into that more or yeah. you should try to, I mean, as like a, as a discipline, cause I don't know, then you get more used to it and it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I it's, it is weird hearing you say fear of judgment and things like that. I mean, it's not weird, but I guess just maybe this is purely because I'm your brother, but I feel like ever since, uh, high school for me, when our relationship sort of hit a point where we realized we could talk about deeper things or talk about things that were hurtful with mom or dad or whatever it is, um, that, that felt like a, like something changed right in that age. And we became friends as opposed to just siblings. But, and I, so all that to say, I feel like anything I've ever asked you, you've just laid it on the table. Mm -hmm. And at least with me personally, you were unafraid to be honest and just say your crummiest or worst thoughts. And I don't know if that's because you knew I would not judge you or I kind of knew where you were coming from. Yeah. But obviously with other people, you feel a little more. Yeah, I think, and I still, I'm, I'm pretty much that way with most people. Hmm. Um, but I think a lot of the time it has scared people off. Yeah. Because totally. the first time I meet them, I will tell them um a lot and not everybody, but um in in those intimate settings. Sure. Um yeah. I will be super open and honest about things that I have felt or um or thought, which is fine yeah. with me. Mm -hmm. Um because I think I think that vulnerability can only lead to good things. Um and being honest. Um, but I think it has scared so many people off. Yeah, absolutely. I felt that as well. It's, <laughs> it's discouraging to come up, come up against that. Uh, and to just realize, I mean, that's kind of what you were talking about realizing, Oh, okay. I'm a little weird in comparison to other people. Like, some folks are just not used to going to these places. Whereas for me, it's all I think about, or it's mm -hmm. like, how can you not talk about these things constantly and just want to, to flesh them out with people and, and figure out what the fuck our lives are. Um, so yes, but don't be scared away by that or don't not, not scared, but um, like don't silence yourself or shut yourself down just because of those occurrences because yeah. i've done that and gotten pissed at people and and shut people out of my life <laughs> uh because i'm just like dude whatever you don't get it you don't care about me forget you um that was a tangent again but i i love talking about this kind of stuff i guess i mean in the midst of this time of life i i asked you a similar question earlier but what what just brings you a lot of joy right now, even if that's as simple as like watching something on Netflix and just having beer and popcorn or something, you know, yeah. uh, where do you get refreshment and sort of revive yourself? Yeah. Um, currently it's a giant chocolate milkshake, <laughs> just like it just, you know, I don't know. It just what, like homemade, restores you have my a soul. Oh no. Favorite place. Um, I go to Chick-fil-A a lot and Sonic. Um, but, it, well, like half the time I go to Sonic, their ice cream machine is broken. <laughs> I think they're lying to me, though. Um, it's Colorado Springs for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I tried to make one last night and it was, oh my gosh, it was fucking disgusting. <laughs> I like. <laughs> well, where are we I don't like, know. I think I added too much milk. Um, yeah, it was just really gross. Um, I also have like the worst blender in the world. Mm. Like it, you might as well just like mix it with a spoon and it probably makes it up better. Um, so a chocolate milkshake and, um, and just making art, yeah. making something with my hands. Yeah. 
um, has just been so um, therapeutic for me. Right. And um, and it's funny, actually, um, something that Andy Othling said, um, I think it was on the Bad Christian podcast, um, and I've heard this a million times before, but it was like when he said it this last time, something clicked, um, that he thinks you should make art for yourself and not for anyone else. Yeah. Um, and I think just because of past just awful church experiences or, um, or just feeling pressure from whatever, um, I have felt like, okay, if I, if I make art, it needs to be this Instagram worthy thing, or it needs to be, um, for the church or it needs to, I don't know, like it just has to be, um, the current trend of art or whatever, instead of like, no, this thing is purely from me and this is coming from a vulnerable place inside myself. Right. And this is something I'm creating for me. And if you like it, cool. If you don't, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and so that has just given me so much freedom to create whatever I want. Right. Um, logistically, it's been a little bit tough because yeah. I mean, I understandably don't, so. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I don't have a space for it sure. right now. Um, but I'm planning to either convert my garage or our shed in the back yeah. to an art studio where I can just leave everything and, right. um, come and go as I have time. Yeah. That's such a, what Andy, I think said, such a simple concept that I feel like both of us personally used to, without even realizing it, sort of adopt. I mm-hmm. mean, just, you know, we we both as kids or as in high school or middle school or whatever, just used to make things before there was internet, before there was Instagram. And it's just like, what the fuck are we doing? How did we get here to where... I I know we always talk about social media on this show, but it I it just I wish I could get my brain to just go back to the roots, so to speak, and um, make little California raisins with clay and not <laughs> share it, you know, just because I loved yeah. doing that. And I'm trying, and I think I'm getting closer, and I hope you are too. Um, but it's just it's a strange thing that I don't understand. Uh, that we're just dying for that affirmation, I guess, or, or something. Um, well, I hope you do make an art studio yeah. or you should, you just should make that happen. Yeah. Um, is Brandon, does, is he able to give you time? Um, even if the boys are still awake, you know, not in bed to, to go do that or to even, I know you like me like to go see movies by yourself and stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. He does. Um, he, I think he offers every single day, like, I'll put the boys to bed. I'll do this. If you need, if you need time to get out or take him whatever. up on that well, shit. I don't know. I don't know. I've, yeah. Um, yeah, I do. And then usually it ends up like, I just, something goes wrong. Something always goes wrong. Sure. Um, which I, I often will go out with these expectations of like, I'm going to go do a million things and I'm just going to feel so amazing afterward. And I just feel awful after. Um, And uh, that's kind of one of the things that one of these self-help books that I've been reading is talking about um, coping methods versus self-care. Yeah. Um, And self-care is something that just like, oh, it just like, makes me want to vomit yeah um, it's a little iffy it's a weird term yeah it, yeah it just makes me so uncomfortable and i think that is largely from the church that i was going to as well um just that you need to you need to die to yourself like you're nothing but trash you're you're no good hmm. um and um and i think also as a mom just feeling like 
I can't take any time for myself. Like that is so selfish. Hmm. Um, uh, I can't remember what we were oh, talking just, about. Yeah. Just, just taking time to go do things and yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe expecting too much of yourself or of your own experience when yeah. you go to do that. Yeah. And I think I had turned a lot of things into just coping, mm-hmm. um, like turning on Netflix for three hours after the kids are in bed or, sure. um, or I don't know, like watching YouTube for three hours, um, which aren't, aren't bad things, but I totally turned them into like coping things instead of going and finding out, okay, what, what do I need right now? What is, what am, what am I actually seeking? Um, is it like, do I need intellectual stimulation? Do I need, um, just quiet? Um, and instead I would just go and, like sit in a coffee shop and people watch for like two hours, which Mm. is fine and good. And it was helpful to um, just like not have to answer toddler questions. Um, But it also wasn't filling me up in any way. Sure. Um, So right now I'm kind of trying to figure out what does that look like? What does self care mean for me right now? Right. You can answer this as much or as little as you want, and we don't have to talk about it. Um, but where are you at on faith right now? Just, uh, I, oh man, I don't know right now. Hmm. Um, I. I'm pretty done with the church. Um, and I know that's different, but it's also hard to separate those things, I think. Um, I think I still believe in God. Um, and I still think that there are experiences that I've had um, that I can't ignore. Yeah. Um, but I think there's also just a lot of, um, a lot of hurt and a lot of trauma from, um, past churches and past, um, relationships and pastors and, um, and things that are, really difficult for me to separate from my faith. Um, and there are just a lot of things that I have trouble reconciling right now. Yeah. Um, so the really popular thing right now is deconstruction. Mm. Um, and I think I would have to use, use that right now that that's, sure. that's where I am and just kind of reassessing, everything um but also feeling like i can't i can't deal with that right now like Hmm. i need to put that away sure for a little while and just um get to a stable place in my daily life and then i can kind of figure things out um right because that takes its own whole chunk of mental energy, right. which is even kind of uh, physically exhausting. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think Emmy and I have talked a, a lot lately about how I, th- I think people who grew up with a similar upbringing as we did, at least speaking to the church and sort of the Baptist <laughs> way of of looking at things or the baptist uh, brand of christianity it just it's messing a lot of people up right now um not at all to take away from your s- situation but i i just feel like there's a lot of people our age who are sort of just like wait a minute you know what what is this this does not match up or whatever was driving for us all through high school and college is now 
completely falling through and maybe because that's maybe that's because we don't know how to be adults or i don't know yeah um i've had a lot of those thoughts as well and just i sort of there's a weird tension of recognizing i've been a shitty person in the midst of it um and i've been quote unquote not a good christian um i just in in terms of caring for people or, or exemplifying anything that christ was in his life um but also it's just just feeling like people are so fucking flaky and i'm tired of them and i really like all the people that i like and respect and appreciate in my life are not in the church mm-hmm. uh basically and so i don't know it's like i don't I don't want to let, I'm sorry, I, I did not mean to make this about me. I don't, I don't want to let go of the, um, I still believe in God and I would agree that like there, there are things that have happened and, and things that I believe that God has orchestrated that I could not deny were some supernatural being with which I still believe to be God and Christ tied to that. Um, but it's just a mess. Our, our country and uh yeah young people in general it it just feels very uh prevalent that all of us are trying to figure out how to how to be because the world that we grew up in with our parents it just doesn't look like that anymore or the the parts of it that do were like no that's not that's not the way to do things um so i i don't know i hope that we will all land somewhere safe uh and correct and right but yeah people's heads are messed up anyway tangent (laughs) um here's a weird question okay and we typically don't go political on this show but uh, (laughs) what is it like being a woman in trump's america Oh my gosh. I know, I know. That's that's big, but I okay. Let me just preface that a little bit. That it's like, oh boy, I want to be careful here now. Andy's going to be cringing. Andy just say, we've well, already talked about Jesus. He's already going to like be super uncomfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I I just I just think Trump is so um, particularly disgusting towards uh women and i do i do think he's a creep and um at his core probably a a pretty wicked man or at least a businessman who everything is about money and um it it is insanity insanity to me frankly that he is our president and it makes me sad and um, I can't believe it. It feels like a cartoon show or, or uh, some very bad nightmare. But um, I just feel like this sick, disgusting, unrespectable person and, and how his policies affect our world and our, or our country in, in relation to being a, a mom. Just where are you at? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I am wrestling through, through that. Um, and that kind of ties into the church and faith right now. Yeah. Also with me is, is what, um, what is a woman's role? Um, and how, how does it differ from a man's or does it differ from a man's? Hmm. Um, and yeah, I think I mostly think about it in light of, my kids yeah um absolutely it was kind of funny so we have a five-year-old and um before the election we were talking about it with him just kind of a little bit like sure um like obama's good yeah. trump is bad yeah. uh, <laughs> that's all you need to know yeah. um yeah we we just kind of explained to him like the um the process a little bit um and so the next morning um after the election he woke up and and was like mom who won Mm. and 
And I said, um, Donald Trump. And I had the news on and I pointed him out and he was like, oh, is, did he win? Cause he's the best man. <laughs> and I was like, well, nope. Right. That, yeah. Um, and I said, no, he's not a very good man. And, and he was asking me why, why is he, why is he a bad man? And, and so I just kind of said, well, cause he, um, he doesn't treat people very well. And, um, and he went to school that day and oh <laughs> shared with his entire class cause they have share time sometimes. And he raised his hand and they were talking about the election and he said, my mommy says that he's a bad man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so we got talked to after that uh, by the teacher. Um, oh boy. Anyway. Like, so that was, just, like, well, what, 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 it was like, it was like, um. Just be careful about what you say around your kids. Oh my gosh. Um, so at first I felt really bad and was like, oh my gosh, I'm the worst mother ever. But then I felt like, no, he's not a good man. And right. that's okay for my kid to understand that. Yeah. He doesn't have to carry any weight, uh, any weight of that. But, sure. um, but no, he didn't win because he's the best man. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I think about it largely in light of... Um, my kids and um, just, I want them to, um, to respect women and to, um, to value women and, and to protect women. Um, And yeah, I, it's discouraging. Um, it's discouraging to see um, just the the amount of support that he had and has, mm-hmm. but it's also not super shocking to me. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, it's well. I yeah, I recognize it's a loaded <laughs> question that you weren't expecting. Um, Along those lines, and this might be weird too, so sorry, I'm just dumping this all on you. I guess I feel comfortable enough to ask it, but um, what, how do you view sort of the whole feminist movement? And so, because obviously I recognize that has many facets and there's kind of a spectrum there of um, women who are very extreme. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, but there's, there's just this thing has sort of settled into our culture and it relates to race as well, of course. Um, But I, my, my feeling is that it has gone in some ways a bit extreme, not that I think the world should be run by men, but just that it's almost like the needle has, has crossed the threshold in the wrong direction of like, all men are wicked and evil and fuck you guys. And we're taking over. Yeah. There's, clearly i think any level-headed person should see there should be a a balance there and i'm sorry i asked you a question and now i'm sharing my own opinion uh (laughs) but let me finish this thought sorry um it's just like of course i think women should be equal in in every sense and i also recognize that there are roles and jobs and different pieces that we all play in this puzzle um and so just you know all of us have seen on social media these sort of things that have gotten blown out of proportion where it's just like man fucking dicks like they're the they're the worst they're all they're all terrible and look at these guys who just shame women and hate them and whatever uh, and it always it those stories almost always boil down to just something so minuscule and stupid mm-hmm. and it was it riled up by immature people um so I don't know, it, in a weird way, it's like even to be a man right now, at least on social media, if you take that as a snapshot of the world, it's like, oh boy, I better fucking behave. Like I, I better watch what I say and make sure I'm politically correct. And I, I just, I wish everybody could kind of calm down and just be like, hey, it's it's good. Like let's let's work together, sure, but let's not throw it out of proportion. So anyway. Yeah. What is your assessment of that? And am I wrong or am I crazy? Because I might be. Well, I don't know if I'm the person to ask that. Um, but 
I, um, it was interesting because with, um, with the women's March and everything that Mm -hmm. happened right after the election, I, I had some friends who were pretty far on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, and, um, one friend who just like, she was out there marching with her daughter and, um, and I wanted to go just to kind of see what was happening and, and talk to women. And, um, I can't remember what was happening, but I wasn't able to go. Um, but I talked to this one friend after and she, um, she kind of was like, I don't want to accuse you of anything, but why didn't you march? Oh gosh. Um, and I was like, well, I, I got three kids, like, bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, um, no, she wanted me to have all three of them out there with their pussy hats on. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, um, right. but my oppressive husband wouldn't let me go. Um, mm, that Brandon, he's very oppressive. Uh, yeah. So I had talked to her about it and I was just like, I honestly, it's, it is so unclear to me. Um, I feel like it ha- like there wasn't this clear message yeah. from all of these women. It was like some of these women were marching for Black Lives Matter and some of these women were marching for um, the wage gap and some were marching for health care and all these things. And it was like it just wasn't clear sure. and i and i kept hearing so many people compare it to martin luther king and his mm-hmm. his marches and stuff which i just feel is like absolutely ridiculous hmm. um because when he marched it made such a big statement because um it wasn't the 100th march that had happened that month yeah it was something that was out of the ordinary. It was something that was huge. It was something that had one clear message and everyone knew what that was. Um, Whereas with the women's March, it was like um, just this whole big mess of nothing was communicated clearly. Sure. Um, And so I felt like I didn't think that it was wrong and I didn't, I didn't think that it was bad, but it also was like, oh my gosh, there are so many marches happening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know what any of them are for. Yeah. And and I would ask some people and they would say one thing and, and other people would say another. Um, so I don't, it's hard to tell right now because um, with things like, like the wage gap, when you actually look at um, at the research that's been done, Mm-hmm. Um, the, the reality is that some women don't get paid less than their, um, than their male, uh, counterparts or yeah. sort of in the same position. Yeah. Right. Or, or it's that women feel inferior and they, they won't ask for a raise and men mm-hmm. will, or they won't ask for as much money and men will. Sure. Um, so it's kind of like, man, what is, what's the truth here? And I, I absolutely think that that in our culture there is um there is a difference and I do think that women are viewed as objects mm-hmm. but it's also confusing to me because um women say they want to be respected for more than their bodies and then they're on the covers of magazines naked sure. and and so it's like well what do you actually want do you actually want people to respect you for for your mind um yeah uh, I don't know, not to sound like some prude, but it, but it's kind of like it, this feels like common sense to me. Yeah. Um, if if you want to be um, respected and and viewed this way, then then um, you kind of have to act th- that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a weird double standard going on there in some cases. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and so I think. I am for women and I want equality for women. Um, and I want women to be respected. Um, but I also, um, I also do think that it has gone to the extreme where, um, it's not necessarily 
individual women that I've talked to, but sure. but the women as a whole that are being rep- represented, um, it just feels like they're man haters, and yeah. and so where I see it is, I would love to um, to celebrate the differences, but but also say that we're equal um, because I. I think that I can care for my children in a way that my husband can't care for them. And that is a good and beautiful thing. Right. Um, it's not because one of us is better than the other. Um, but I do think that there is some biological difference and, um, and gifts that we have and strengths that we have. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say, just at least in terms of the marches, that it felt so messy and unspecified because uh, I felt that way as well. Even if important things were being marched for, perhaps, you know, it, it did not necessarily have a central purpose. And so then it just becomes kind of this big mess where a lot of people are jumping into the mob, so to speak, or literally. Uh, and it's like, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm angry. I'm riled mm-hmm. up about this, and I'm like, make sure you see me here. Yeah. Uh, make sure everybody knows. Like, I'm with this, and and that is sort of the the pressure for for men and women that I don't think is healthy uh, when we just have to show publicly that we're on board with this thing that hasn't really been clearly defined. Um. And I do think it just makes a big mess. And and media, not social media, but media, news stations and things like that, they they play it up. You know, they mm-hmm. th- there will be a trending tweet or a story or whatever of just like outrage over such and such was treated, you know, like <laughs> what, whatever it may be, <laughs> was treated poorly by a man. And so suddenly uh, it just... Yeah. Uh, I, I hope... That that not all of our country is that dumb to just eat it up and and assume that that is the way things are or the way things should be. But it is weird thinking back, even you and I growing up, not that this is the way that things should be and not that this may, this is probably bad, but, you know, just thinking of something as banal as a sitcom and it's like, hey, there'd be some joke about women are terrible at driving, aren't they? Ha, ha, ha. And like everybody would laugh at that, including women. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, even now it's like I'm apologizing for myself for even <laughs> referencing something like that. And it's just why 20 years ago that was okay. And now we'd be like, ah, oh, it's fucking uh, anti-feminist or, or sexist. Like you pig, you should get ter- torn off the station or something. Yeah. It's so silly. Um, I, I don't know. Obviously, I got a little worked up there, but it's it's it is confusing growing up with that, where that's okay. Just something silly like that. It doesn't matter. We make jokes about guys too. Yeah. Guys are idiots. They leave the toilet seat up or some like the just the stupidest lowest grade joke. It's like haha, yeah, okay. We're all human. That's dumb. We do that. Specifically, males do that. Great. Can we just chill out and not call something sexist? And then that person's reputation is ruined forever. Yeah. Um, goodness sakes, it just seems like such a mess. Wow. <laughs> need to lighten it up in here. <laughs> well, what have you been watching on Netflix? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, or on YouTube, whether it's just pure idiocy to make you laugh or, or whatever. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't really watch like funny stuff on YouTube. Um, but I watch a lot of vegan youtubers oh my gosh Um, what does that even mean like they're making recipes yeah i don't know why i started watching that um there i mostly follow like food youtubers or just like well i guess some of it is just like stupid stupid stuff like last night i watched a youtube video of um Jenna Marbles, do you know who she is? <laughs> I kind of recognize the name. She, I'm... she's done a lot of stuff. Um, Turn the slide off. Uh, but she was putting acrylic nails on her boyfriend. <laughs> um, 
So it just it's just like these yeah really stupid videos. Is she um, one of those people who kind of has a YouTube following just for the most insane yeah. silly things? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and the uh, or I watch a lot of makers. Um, like I watch this one woman. Um, her name is Laura Kampf. She is from she's from Germany. Okay. And she just like does this beautiful woodworking and she nice. quit her job to do YouTube and, um, Dang. and all of this stuff. Um, yeah. And there, she just makes these really beautiful videos. Um, she was in TV and, and, um, learned about all of this different, different stuff. And now she makes furniture and makes her own projects and stuff. Nice. Yeah. Is that uh, inspiring? I mean, it even, is, even yeah. on the food side, like I want to make that recipe or I want to, you know, go yeah. make something crafty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have always wanted to learn woodworking um, and like welding and stuff like that. Um, but again, like, like we were talking about, I felt like, well, I'm a girl. I can't mm. learn that stuff, which is stupid. And I should just do it anyway. Yeah. Um, Make an art studio and a wood workshop. Yeah, I would love to do that. Um, I was researching some classes, but it's like in Colorado Springs, it's it's very conservative. And so yeah. all of them are like, it's like Billy Bob's <laughs> woodworking class for like for these like 80 year old grandpas who are learning woodworking and stuff. And right. so you walk in and they're like, what the hell? <laughs> we don't allow no ladies in here. <laughs> like they've never seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, I would love to learn that. Yeah. I hope you do have, find the time to do that. Cause that, that would be awesome. And woodworking is specifically really satisfying. You know, obviously it takes a, a lot of screwing up and messed up projects that you just have to burn. But anyway, yeah, that that is its own thing that is so comforting and, and therapeutic. Um, other than the, you referenced the self-help books, but mm -hmm. are you, I know you like fiction, but maybe just don't get that much time. Uh, have you been reading anything lately? Yeah. Um, I on and off for like a year and a half i've been reading uh the fellowship of the ring yeah um which i'm really enjoying and it actually has helped my anxiety a lot um i was reading i actually really enjoy nonfiction, um and i always have but i was reading so much nonfiction, hmm. and they were all just like super depressing Okay. books yeah um so i think even though it wasn't about me it was still causing me to have like all of this anxiety especially when i was trying to go to sleep right. um so i found that reading fiction before i go to bed um i think it just helps me um dissociate like totally yeah. from current life right and takes me to this other thing um was really helpful um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, I often will read like one page a night before I fall asleep. Sure. And then I don't even remember it the next <laughs> night. So I have to like read that page over again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What Fellowship of the Ring is great. I have only finally read that and the two towers. Uh, well, I guess it was two winters ago um but yeah it was kind of like i felt crummy on myself for having never read lord of the rings and to this day i've still never read return of the king but um yeah i was pleasantly surprised by how enjoyable mm -hmm. it was and i it took me a while to separate the movies from my head yeah. and they are different enough that you kind of can in moments um but yeah they're really wonderful books um what have you been listening to both on the podcast side and music wise yeah um 
I have been listening to a lot of jazz. Nice. And that's interesting. A lot of blues, like like muddy waters and yeah and stuff. Um, I I don't remember why. Well, I guess it started because I watched um, a Keith Richards documentary. Okay. Yeah. And um, he talked a lot about that was where he got his inspiration from yeah. or kind of his love of music was like lead belly and muddy waters and stuff. Right. Um, so I started listening to them and then, um, I am planning a birthday party for Brandon. Yeah. Um, which is going to be like a big speakeasy, uh, murder mystery party, um, which is totally not my thing. Um, but doing the party and actually like decorating it and like getting the music and getting the, the scene right and stuff, um, is what I'm more into. So researching like the music and and stuff has been kind of fun. Are you writing the murder mystery too? No, 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 no. (laughs) no. Cause I I mean, I'd be scared of doing that and I, I'm kind of a writer. So yeah. Yeah. Are there are there templates or something online yeah, or sort of pre written stories? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna nice. buy one. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, blues is a lot of fun and jazz. Well, I've still never gotten into, but the this is so stupid. The movie La La Land made me want to listen to more jazz. Yeah. Because of that one specific scene where Ryan Gosling talks about it so passionately. Yeah. And you can just kind of hear. Obviously, that's sort of the director's voice coming through him that he feels that jazz is dying and like needs to be upheld. Um, but I was just like, man, I, I don't know anything about jazz. I want to. Yeah. Um, are the, is there anyone specific or do you just go to kind of playlists? Um, I can't even remember right now. Yeah, I could look at fine. my phone and, and figure it out. Sure. Um, yeah. I can't remember yeah, right now. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and what about podcasts? If if any, yeah. what do you listen to? Um, Other than Inko and Echo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I mean, stupid. that is the number one. Like, Monday morning, I'm just You're like... You're just up, just 1 a.m. Like, refreshing that, <laughs> that uh, feed. Trevor's awake at 1.30 a.m. You're just like putting in your earbuds, ready for some Josh and Andy. Um, yeah, I... I listen to Bad Christian a lot. Yeah. I I still really enjoy them. Um and um I Reply All is probably one of my favorites. Is that an NPR? I don't recognize uh, that name. It's a Gimlet Media. Okay. Um I feel I've heard people talk about it. I don't know okay. what is the premise of that show. It's all about the internet. Okay. Um but the the two hosts are just like these dorky lovable guys um and there's just just really interesting stories um and let's see what else do i listen to um i really enjoy startup also okay which is another gimlet um podcast which is more about businesses right and uh tech companies and stuff like that yeah okay yeah um and you used to be pretty into Mark Maron. Are you yeah, still? Yeah, that's what or, I was going to say. The okay. other thing. Yeah, I lately I haven't known or cared about the guests that he's had on. Sure. Um, and honestly, I was kind of I kind of like just got annoyed with him after mm. I saw him live. Mm-hmm. Um, he just was kind of like there was this one stupid joke that he spent like. 15 minutes on i'm not even joking and it was the most annoying thing i think i have ever heard a comedian talk about um wow and so i was just like it was all about this premise of a children's book that he was gonna write um and was the crowd like laughing it up or they not really okay there was a lot of older people there okay and so sure i mean they were like, yeah, they were kind of eating it up. And so he was playing it up. Um, sure. But 
I don't know. Like, it's probably really stupid and silly. But after that, I was just kind of like, man, I just felt disappointed. Sure. Yeah, when you pay that much money to go see somebody. and Yeah. I, yeah. And it... <laughs> So sometimes scenarios like that can sort of disenchant you from that person from yeah. then on that it's like, well, they served their purpose for part of my life and now I'm kind of done with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this has been really good. How do you feel? Good. Yeah. Do you think you'll regret anything you said or want it taken out? I'm sure that I will regret all of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't because I, I think it's going to be really fruitful yeah. to our listeners. Yeah. And damn it, we're Andy and I are bad feminists because we've <laughs> see, you're only the second woman to ever be on this show. That's not by design, but it's just silly to think of it that way. Well, thank you, sister, yeah. for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I was surprised. I thought we were going to talk more like childhood stories. Mm. No, I'm too scared <laughs> to go there because I know mom and dad will probably listen to this. <laughs> We can't just lay all our hurt on the table right away. Well, it doesn't we can, have to be hurt. It can sure. be like... Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Silly. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, the other part of childhood. The smaller <laughs> segment of childhood that was joy. <laughs> Not one day. Um, oh, where... If you don't mind, where can people find your blog? Yeah. Um, it is failingmotherhood.com. It's a very particular choice. I'm sort yeah. of surprised that URL wasn't taken. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a great title, even yeah. as heavy as it is. <laughs> yeah. But yes, go to failingmotherhood.com and read Andy's blogs and cry and then email her <laughs> with your problems. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. This was fun. Yeah. Oh, boy. What you think of that, Andy? <laughs> boy, I don't even know yeah. yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell me about it, Josh. Tell me right. what I oh. what I'm going to hear. Well, dang it! Now we're now we're after it, so everyone's already heard it. But um, <laughs> well, here's what's going to surprise you. This is this is weird and backwards because Andy uh -huh. Hoffling has not heard the interview yet. But we let me tell you what we talk about. We talk about Trump. Ooh. We talk about feminism. Uh, we talk about de depression, anxiety. I mean, faith. We run the gamut. And uh, boy, but that I mean, sounds like everything. <laughs> the only things that are to be talked about right so cool. uh you'll you'll enjoy that when you okay. hear it uh, you you should listen to this whole one i, will. I know you don't always do that <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> which is fine <laughs> okay well i'm glad she came and maybe we could do another one where i'm there yeah how about that yeah yeah i'm sure okay great yeah all right you, we're gonna do an internet comment if you're okay with that is that all hit right? it all right hit it off <laughs> All right, so the, these are two comments right next to each other that came from, I did a, uh, a Facebook Live thing before the album came out, mm -hmm. um, which by the way, The Swiss Illness is out. If you haven't heard it, go to lowercasenoises.com and listen to it on Spotify or whatever the hell you want to do. Um, so I, I was doing this Facebook Live stream um, and the, I got these two comments right next to each other. And I feel like they so illustrated something I talk about very free, maybe frequently on this podcast. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so the first comment, um, it, it doesn't really matter. It says, from a guitar player's perspective, do you use your effects loop in your amp or do you go straight into the front of the amp? All the way, your guitar tones and layers are sick. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Fine comment. doesn't really matter. And then <laughs> that, the one that one's not going to get a reply. Basically. no not really no yeah. not a, whatever so but then the very next comment um and mind you this is in like a stream of stuff where i'm I'm reading it as i'm live and trying to respond to people sure um, and so the next comment was uh you were one of my best friend's favorite artists unfortunately he passed away about two weeks before he could hear this album he was really looking forward to it though your stuff is incredible <laughs> <laughs> which is just so heavy Dude, yeah. and it's, you know, I've gotten stuff similar to that before, and it just, those two comments right next to each other, like, so illustrated why I don't want to spend time on the gear stuff, because there is 
so much more important things going on. Yeah. Not not even just the music I make, but just music in general. Like there is a way more there are multiple far more important layers to it than whether I use an effects loop on my amp or not. <laughs> yeah. And I just I, once I saw that comment and I responded, I I don't even remember exactly what I said on the live feed, but I tried to address it and I was like, man, I'm so sorry to hear that. Like but I mean that's something that's gonna stick with me, you know? And even a part of me was like man, if I could have got it done sooner, this poor kid could have mm. heard it before he died, which is, that's insane. Sure. Um, and I don't know if I should let my mind go too far down that path because... Yeah, probably um, not. But it, it's, uh, it's a oh, lot Olive's of things. Awake. Sorry, oh, I keep talking. Come here, bring baby. On, bring on Olive. Olive just woke up from her nap. Come on, Olive. Be on the podcast. Oh, I can even give her her own headphones one sec here. Oh, anyway, yes. you can finish what you're saying. No, I just, there, there's so many emotions in that because one is just like heaviness and sadness for this person, for his, he lost his friend. And then the, the other part is the realization that the art that I create can mean so much to different people. Like that's just crazy. And it's heavy in its own way. It, feel, it feels like a, I don't know, not really pressure, but just, um, I don't know. I can't really f focus my head too much on that, like the, the fact that it's meaningful. But uh, right. Um, I don't know. It's just I, I was I was amazed by the. Uh, I, I feel like without even having to describe my thoughts on gear culture and comments and stuff, I feel like that <laughs> just the juxtaposition of those two things was like, well, that's without even saying anything. That's why. I care about that stuff so little now yeah. and don't really want to spend time talking about it or cultivating a fan base that I give them that all the time. I don't know. Sure. So, yeah. And then a person who doesn't, well, I think that's something most people just don't think about very much that you get hit with comments like that, uh, that, that people Which are coming comments? to you saying these things. Oh, both. Yeah, both blends of them, very, very yeah. personal things, and just yes. such silly, pointless things. Uh, someone who's not a public figure, to use a weird term, uh, they're yeah. they're just you know probably doesn't occur to them that you get contacted like that. Well, and that's the thing is, I never want to um, be offended by a, an individual who asks a question because I there's no ill will like on any side from anybody. Sure, yeah, but. Yeah. It's weird being on my end because if I if what I see is seventy five percent of comments about my music or about the tone or about the gear, that makes me think, okay, what am I doing wrong here? Because obviously I'm presenting something in a way that that causes that to happen. So in a way, I see that it's my fault. Like I'm not blaming any individual person, but when when it gets up to scale and I see so many people asking the same questions that I don't really want to, that's not the direction I want to go. It's just, uh, yeah. So what all I'm saying is it's not their fault. It's my fault. And what do I have to do to change mm -hmm. the culture of, of what I'm trying to facilitate here? And basically I try to do it. I think I've probably talked about this before, but passively, I mean, even in this situation, I didn't answer that guy's question about the guitar effects loop but i did talk to that guy about his yeah. friend because in the moment that was obviously a million times more important and so hopefully right. over time that comes through <laughs> with with the audience i have and whatever new people come on board over time so yeah so there you go i i appreciate it well yeah and i appreciate that guy saying that that's i'm glad to know that that sort of thing happens um, right with my music and in, in people's lives so yeah absolutely so there there you go there's the internet comment there you have it that's, that's what's all nice doing one. uh now she walked away to turn off her sound machine i think in her room i know i was gonna try to get her to sing some daniel tiger songs but <laughs> oh hell yeah um, oh well well this has been a good good long one hope you guys mm -hmm. enjoyed this two-hour audio journey <laughs> Yes. It's just about going to be that long. So tune in next week for, we got Dave Mantell coming back on the show to talk about his new oh, record. Oh yeah. It's a and good it's one. it's going to be silly and sad and 
just all the Inkineko flavors. Yep. What what Daniel Tiger songs do you know? Um, you'd have to start me off. Uh, well, here's one. Stop and listen to Stay Safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's about crossing the road. That's a very useful show for kids. Like it, it, it truly is, yeah. Because I mean, I've there's been multiple times where my kids are doing something, and the Megan would be like, "Hey, remember the song and sing the song about not about being nice to your brother or whatever." Right. It's actually it's, it's helpful. Yep. So, kudos to you, DT. That's what I call him. <laughs> 